Welcome back to the Guinness Guide. We're going to continue where we left off on the last one. And let's go. Now, nice house. Can I can I walk towards this house? I can. What about if I walk away from this house? Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every away. video game runs on what's called an engine, which I'm determines what the game can and cannot do. So, in other words, the engine is ah, a set of tools for game development. Okay, let's have a look at this house. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, engine. Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. <laughs> That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Certainly does bricks very well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. What is this? A coffee bar. Streetwise fool. Okay. Can we go in here? Let's go into the disabled toilets. Okay. <laughs> Not a lot of room here for to do things. What's here? Oh, oh, there's a kitchen. Why oh, is it basement? Um, can I avoid the basement? No. So I have to go down the basement then. What just happened? This is a very dangerous basement to be in. Oh! Okay. Am I dying? I'm not gonna fall. Oh! Oh! But I wanted to walk. Okay. I was just. Okay, I die. Can't die then. That's kind of a bonus in the game. Where's the top? Ah, there Still a wall there. Oh, there it is, yeah. Maybe we can get around it to see what that thing's all about. Nope, it's a wall there. Way to go. It's like a space invaders noise in the background. I'm gonna choose this. No, I'm not. <laughs> I can't go that way. That's the same way. Let's get this. What? Hang on. Can't. Can't go that way. Okay. Let's go. Have to go up here. This prison. Oh. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, going down. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games. 
that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. This has changed. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find <laughs> out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Down even further. I like it. Get dizzy doing this. Now somehow we've gone down twice, and yet we're outdoors. Or a facsimile of outdoors anyway. We're going down even further. It's the puzzle again. Yay! With the exact same solution as the last time. Ow! Oh, missed it. Balls it up. indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Okay. This has a run button. It's just kind of fast walking. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your This could change the whole. Um, let's go three. Switch again. It's quite simple. What? Okay, I'm just bored of you guys now. I'm going to go away. Okay, I'm sure you will, because I'm probably bound to do the Stanley Parable thing and come back to this very room. Nope, going further down. Doors again. 
can either go on down three levels, or like it. Three levels. What do we have to do it's here? a lamppost. Yeah. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. Fate Black. Definitely different. Leave notes. Okay. I like that. That was good. A little bit of Stanley Parable esqueness in there where you go around and meet the same thing again. Uh, if you like this, leave a like. Uh, leave me a comment. That'd be great. Also, subscribe to the channel. I'd like that very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to play the next level very soon. I do upload in HD, but for some reason YouTube and my poor connection does it in 480 and sometimes really bad 360. Anyway, thanks for watching and come back for the next level if you like. Bye!